Now, this issue of the Palestinian so-called right of return is a hotly contested issue. Speculation that the Trump administration may reject that call would likely send shockwaves throughout the Middle East. Today, the UN's Palestinian Refugee Agency, UNRWA, serves millions of second and third generation Palestinians, many of whom live in refugee camps to this day. But if these reports are true, the U.S. would seek to cap that number by nearly 90 percent. And with me on to discuss, this is David Bedin, the CEO for the Center of Near East Policy Research. David, thank you for joining us. Good to be here. So my first question is, uh, why do the Palestinians feel like they have a right to return? The right of return, from their point of view, is the focus of their educational system, mm -hmm. their focus of their whole life, the whole idea that they have prepared an entire generation to take their homes back from 48. Mm -hmm. It's not nostalgia, it's very real. And it's, it's so Trump and other Western leaders are starting to understand the material that our agency has put, been putting out for, for more than 30 years, which until recently wasn't taken seriously, that they can actually, actually are planning uh, in all their classrooms and in all their informal activities to take back their homes from 48, even though they don't, they, they, those villages don't exist, but in the minds of the Arab children, it exists to the point where they have military activities in the UNRWA schools and in the UNRWA camps all summer long, making plans, marching along the Gaza Gaza border, and Gaza and and pointing out the kibbutzim, which rests on the on the on the lands of the villages where they exist, mm. which 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 were abandoned in 1948. Now, if you want to get on with the peace process, you can't you can't have you can't do it both at the same time. You can't on the one hand want peace and at the same time want to take back the, the kibbutzim and everywhere else. Now, what we're showing here on the television is what we we filmed in a school. Uh, where the children carry these keys, and on the back of the keys are the names of the villages they came from. And the kids are taught, well, you have to go back there and kill the people who live there. Kill the people who live there. And when the children in the Al-Aida camp, uh, this, is a, this is a picture of a, uh, of, of a keyhole and a key uh, at the entrance to their camp, which is right near in, in Bethlehem, near the uh, grave of Rachel, the matriarch. And uh, it's in the high idea of every child believing that they have a right to use a key to get back to their homes as opposed to getting on with their lives. We're not talking about a, about a small group of people. We're talking about half a million children and a population of five million altogether Arab kids who are in refugee camps. Mm. And the passion that they have, not for, let's say, taking back Gaza or taking back West Bank, not Bay of Jerusalem, but for taking back everything they lost in 48, mm. 531 villages, and the kids, they all live, live and they actually sit in the schoolrooms, classrooms, according to where they came from. So the idea when Trump and other Western leaders are starting to say, excuse me, this is not appropriate for a UN agency, not appropriate for a peace process, this is a step in the right direction. Mm. Well, isn't it, I mean, some have made comparisons to the fact that, you know, the Jews, for example, before there was the state of Israel, they saw what now is Israel as their destined homeland for 2,000 years, and Jewish students and children would learn in schools in Europe, in the diaspora, one day we will return to Jerusalem, next year in Jerusalem. So isn't there something in, similar in, to that? Imagine if there was ever a curriculum, which there isn't, in the, in, the, in the history of the Jewish people, that you're supposed to go to a place and wipe out the, the Arabs or anyone who lives there. That's not part of the Jewish Well, some would say that is somewhat what happened. In the 1948 war, many Palestinians who did live in those lands were expelled from Absolutely. their, their villages. In, in the so. process of the war, yes. But that wasn't part of the education. And it never will be part of the education in Israel that you should take, you should take, take, go to an Arab village, wipe it out, and, and put the Jews in. That's just not part of it. What we have here is a situation where the Arab world, first it was manipulated by the UN, and the UN could have done wonderful things to help absorb them, but the Arab world stood in their place. And the donor countries, $1.2 billion which comes from the donor countries, which keep the people in the refugee camps under the illusion of the right of return. So you're suggesting that the UN took over a billion dollars purposely to keep Palestinians in Absolutely. refugee camps and just to keep them there to prolongate this process? They, of they don't deny it. They don't deny it. They're very, very proud of it. Today, the Saudis have a, have a major role to play in keeping them there. The education system, the schools, the school books are coming out next week. And then the new, new school books are coming out next week, which, which, which you have here, the children learning the, the, that their models, the role models, here you have a picture. This is a, bo a book that came out in the UNRWA schools only four months ago, published by the Palestinian Authority. This is Dalal al-Mugrabi. Now, who is she? She's a hero in this book of four pages that the teachers learn how to uh, teach the kids how to be like her. And who is she? She's someone who, who uh, landed her um, a little raft on the coastal region in 1978 
and uh, com commandeered a bus, murdered 38 people, and this is the role model. And that's never, there's no precedent, no precedent for a school book being of that, of that nature. Mm. The fact that this kind of school book is taught in an UNRWA school is, is a, in a United Nations school that belies the thinking. The thinking was always in Israel and everywhere else, that if a child learns in a United Nations school, he'll come out okay. But the opposite is happening. It's getting worse, and it used to be just incitement. Now it's indoctrination. Every child is learning that he, he has to be like Dalal Mugrabi, and what we've, been, what we've been doing is translating the school books, and I assure you mm -hmm. that if we ever found a school book which promoted peace, reconciliation, we would publish it tomorrow morning. Sure. Well, but, unfortunately, we have to wrap this up. This is a very okay. complex issue. Um, I have to say that, you know, it's a complex issue, and regardless of politics, of leaders, of agendas, UNRWA, United Nations, what have you, there are millions of Palestinians who, regardless of whether they should be in camps or not, are in camps. Absolutely. Um, and that's a very big issue that the world is trying to figure out. David, thank you for thank joining you. us. And anyone who wants to see our material, it's all there in pristine for forum on our website, israelbehindthenews.com, and we welcome people to take a look at it. We're trying to translate it into other languages and bring it to all the parliaments. And the expression we like to use is, let my people know. Thank you, David. Thank you.